Thank you. Yes, Thanks, appreciate that. Uh, Coach, once again, congrats on a great season. Didn't get a chance to say that after the game, but congrats on a, on a great season. Um, just had a couple things, Coach. First, when you have a season like this and, you know, there's a finality for everyone and only one team wins a championship. So all the other teams are going to end it if they're not making the playoffs or with the loss. So, yeah. but when you have a season like this, that was, that, that was so good, um, how tough is it to, you know, uh, that, how tough is that finality that now, okay, you know, guys are going to go separate ways. They're going to do their thing, but that, that finality of, you know, we worked for eight months. Yeah. And then it ends like this. It, it is hard. The, and thank you for your, your uh, compliment. It's unbelievably hard though, just because um, our expectations are to, to be the last team standing. And, you know, in a short period of time, we've come a long way and the process of the expectations have changed so quickly. And, you know, that, that adds a lot more to the stakes. And so when it ends, the way that it ended um, doesn't bother me as much because whether you lose by one or, or 33, the fact is it's over and it, it, can, it comes to an abrupt end based on where you thought you could have been. And, and that part is tough. And, you know, as I reflected last night and talked to the coaches, talked to my family, um, as badly as I felt, I had to also reflect on what we've been able to accomplish, not this, just this year, but over these three years. And I, I wanted to remind the players of that, um, but also wanted them to, you know, understand that, you know, we, we accepted the praise when everybody was talking about us and we we're winning games and guys were accomplishing things. And now we have to accept this, you know, this is going to help us grow um, in a way that last year, didn't allow for us to grow. Like these are the adverse times that, you know, help you. Um, but to your point, it is, it is numbing. It is a huge sting to, to end this way. Um, but it's just part of it. It's part of our journey. We have to accept it and embrace it and um, try our best to, to grow from it. The last thing I had was, uh, cause I see obviously a lot of people got like questions, but the last thing I had was, you know, when you took took eight and out, I think it was around eight twenty six left, and sure. it looked like there was some interaction there. And then you didn't put him back in. And I, I respect the fact of you saying it was eternal, but did you did you and him talk it out after the game? Because it, it just it just the way that ended. Sure. Yeah. No, we didn't. Um, and you guys know me well enough. Like I'm gonna do everything I can to help us win games and. You know, at that point with the lead where it was, um, I made a decision to not hit, not put him back in the game and I'll, I'll keep all of the internal stuff internal, but it was just a decision that I made. Um, and I also got to a point where I didn't feel, feel like Chris and Book um, were going to help us uh, on that particular night. But I do understand the question, but no, we haven't talked. Um, I talked to the team today, but I have not talked to DA personally. Right, next up, we have Kellen Olson with the Arizona Sports, followed by Gerald Bourget. Hey, Monty, I want to echo Dwayne's congratulations on the season. With, with a with a two week stretch like this for you guys as a group, you guys obviously want to learn from it and, and adjust. But in terms of like the radical adjustments that people suggest after after exiting like that, obviously you guys don't want to do too much. Uh, your favorite word, adjustments, of course. To come back to that, just how you guys learn learn from this going forward and, and take away what you need to without drastically altering too much in the process because of it? Yeah, I think that it's going to take time to figure out like what those concrete adjustments look like um, from game to game. Like we made in-game adjustments that helped us. Some didn't, you know, that that's, that's part of it. When you get to a game seven, like that's both teams are making adjustments to counter to get to that point over the overall adjustments, you know, we'll sit down as a staff this year and look at our style of play, 
And do we need to change anything to fit the playoffs a bit better? Um, we felt like it did help us last year to get where we got um, this year playing against a different team. Maybe we, maybe we need to make some adjustments in how we play or whatever that looks like. But, um, you know, that's, that's always on your mind. Um, hard to find the concrete answers when you're so close to your last game, but that, that's something that we will visit, you know, over and over this summer. Next up, we have Gerald Bourget with PHNX, followed by Kent Summers. Hey, Coach, congrats on the season. And just wanted to thank you for always taking the time and uh, putting up with us. But uh, I just wanted to ask, you know, you guys still have this young core with Book and Bridges, DA, Cam Johnson. When you look at this series and, and kind of the way that they were able to key in on Book and, and Chris, you know, not maybe being 100%, what, what do you look at for the younger guys as far as areas where you can improve with the program moving forward? I, you know, I just right now, gee, I, I look at myself and how do I put those guys in a position where they can be more confident uh, when teams are taking away Book and Chris. You know, that, that was the one thing I'm seeing in the playoffs. When you watch all these games, everybody has three or four guys maybe that can put the ball down and go get a bucket. And, you know, I, I'm asking myself over the course of the season that I put those guys in enough positions where they can grow and do that. Um, we thought that we did, but when you look at this past series, maybe not, you know, were there opportunities for us to, you know, give Mikhail, Cam, Landry more opportunities to play um, in those one-on-one -on -one environments? Because in the playoffs, man, everybody knows your plays. You throw the ball around two, three, four times, and then one guy gets it and he goes and gets a bucket. And um, I learned that lesson from Kevin Durant after the finals last year. He said, he was like, coach, look, the playoffs, when you get deep into it, he's like, you got to stop a guy from getting a bucket and you got to go get a bucket. And a lot of the teams have guys that can do that. And I, I ask myself, like, am I, am I preparing our guys to, to do that? I think we have guys that can, uh, Mikhail, Cam Johnson, what I saw from Landry um, in the postseason to complement uh, what we have in booking Chris. Next up, we have Kent Summers with the Arizona Republic, followed by Dana Scott. Um, Monty, the, the, you referred last night to you know the inconsistencies over the last couple of weeks. And can, can you put your finger on that at all? Uh, uh, especially the times where we all kind of looked at it and like, that's not the team that we saw in the regular season. You know, I could sit here and make some excuses about stuff. I'm not going to do that. You know, I, I think everybody's somewhat tired this time of the year. I think teams are dealing with bumps and bruises. Um, we just weren't as consistent as we had shown during the regular season. We were the most consistent team and even in the New Orleans series, we probably weren't at the level that, you know, we had been playing at. But the playoffs will do that to you. Um, teams will take things away. And, you know, your style of play um, hopefully can withstand that. But that's, that's I don't want to make excuses about things that we're all dealing with. Um, we, ju we just weren't, you know, as consistent and playing with the Suns basketball um, force that we had played with. We saw it in stretches, but we just didn't see it enough to, you know, win games on the road and, and certainly in a game seven. Next up, we have Dana Scott with the Arizona Republic, followed by Greg Moore. Uh, Coach, I just wanted you to hear me okay, and congratulations on the season. Thank you. I was just wondering about last uh, in the game five, uh, to some of the things that happened with Biombo. And you said after the game, you're trying to win a basketball game here, and you know the Lucas special things of that nature with Devin. Do you feel like that type of stuff uh, made you cringe and comes back to to bite you in the end? It, you know, similar to the, the Lakers in game three last year, what they were toying with you with LeBron and 
some of the things that the banter was going back and forth? I don't know. I mean, you can make a case for some of that stuff. Um, you know, my charge to our team and, and they will tell you that I, I, I tell them to just focus on winning and don't be, don't get distracted with, um, the antics that can happen in the game. Um, but it happens in every, if you look at every playoff series, there's going to be that stuff. Um, and the teams that can focus on winning and focus on the game uh, typically have more success. But I, I don't know. It, 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 we're, we're speculating, you know, if you, if you think that that was the reason why you lost or lost a series. Uh, at the end of the day, it always comes down to the production on the floor. Can that stuff be a distraction? Yeah, it can be. But it's hard to say if it was. Next up, we have Greg Moore with the Arizona Republic, followed by Cameron Cox. Coach, thanks for your time. Um, I don't want to use anybody's name to put you in a bad spot and think about guys in particular. So I'm just going to ask you, generally speaking, if, if players aren't performing to the level that you'd seen them perform at, maybe they're not as explosive as they were, maybe they – aren't knocking down the shots that they typically would hit, but they're the guys that got you there. What is your thought process in relying on those guys versus pulling them, uh, spelling them, giving them, you know, guys off the bench who might be fresh or more of an opportunity. Take me through that thought process, please. Yeah, it's a hard one. Um, the guys that got you there, you tend to trust them more and you give them a bit more leash, especially your starters or rotation guys. Uh, there are moments where, <clears throat> <clears throat> you do have that that back and forth in your mind. And even when we sit and talk about rotations, you know, do we try to help the guy by giving him a, a rest or, you know, do you pull a guy? And I've, I've had to change the rotation where I pulled a, a couple of guys. But as far as the, the high level, high minute rotation guys that may or may not struggle, you tend to trust them more. Um, I think every coach probably at least the ones I've been around follow that same paradigm but it does cross your mind at times especially after the fact you, you question a lot of things um, but yeah I do for me I do give you know the guys who are high minute guys who've been successful you do give them a bit more leash all right we'll wrap with fi uh, two final questions here first we have Cameron Cox with 12 news followed by Dwayne Rankin Hey, Monty, um, just want to speak for everybody and say thank you for putting up with us all year. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Congrats on the season, Coach. I got two questions for you here. First one, is uh, DeAndre Aiden part of this team's long-term future? And then when it comes to Chris Paul, um, kind of taking a beating among fans today, especially nationally. Uh, Patrick Beverly was on national TV today saying he's a traffic cone. Just what can you tell people about how important Chris Paul is and to the success of this team moving forward. Yeah, the, you know, DeAndre situation is something that we'll deal with this summer. I, I don't want to say anything that in regards to that. Um, James and I are going to have conversations about the team in general. As it relates to Chris, you know, that I don't, this is one of the reasons why I don't have social media and I, I typically don't hear a lot, not because I don't respect what you guys do. I mean, you guys have been around me long enough to know that I respect that all of you have jobs. I also respect the fact that some of the sentiment that has, is out there about us or Chris doesn't necessarily come from you guys. So when I hear stuff like that um, about another player taking a shot at Chris, it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, I look at Chris's body of work. I look at Everywhere he's been, he's taken the organization to levels that in, in some cases they've never been before. And Chris's greatest skill is he cares. And when I see people taking shots at him like that, or I hear from you guys, I, I don't even respond to it. It's not even worth responding. I, everybody in this organization, everyone on this team understands how valuable Chris Paul is and how good he is and what he means to us um, as a coach. And I, I probably overdo this. I, I feel like I, I rode him too much 
and may have worn him out, um, especially in the New Orleans series. Um, he, he, if, if Chris doesn't play as well as he played, we probably don't win that series. And, and, but that's what great players do. They win you series. So when I hear some of this stuff, I just, I'm not going to put a, you know, I could say some things, but we, we're, we're chasing after other things, bigger things. And so I'm not going to wrestle in that, that mud. It does. That's not what we're trying to win. And that was my message to the guys, you know, after game five, like we're trying to win the game. And so to get into all that silliness, um, it doesn't, doesn't do any good in my opinion. Um, Chris is one of the best basketball players in the history of the game. And so you're going to have people taking shots at him that aren't even in that class. Why would I even comment? All right, and we'll wrap up with Dwayne Rankin. Thank you. Coach, uh, looking at, at, at Devin, and I know you, you said also yesterday that maybe you rode Devin um, too much too because it just seemed like you know, he's been getting doubled for years. You know what I mean, not like not like it just started last night, and he's found ways to get points. So, uh, could you sense early in the game that you know he he doesn't seem to have that that he normally has, and was that concerning even early that he's not you know producing the way he usually does in a huge game, particularly the start of a game. I wasn't too concerned early just because I thought there would be a, a little bit of angst and tightness just because it was a game seven. It was our first as a group. Um, I thought over the course of the game, things would just start to level out a little bit. I thought as a team, when we started to miss a lot of open shots, we missed a number of layups. I thought that messed with us a little bit and then they were hitting everything. And so I, I just thought from a team perspective, we were, um, a bit off, but I thought we'd get it back. We just didn't. Uh, as it relates to book, you know, I, I still have the same sentiment that I had last night. I, I just put a lot on his plate. Um, you know, even the game where we were in New Orleans, his first game back, I was only going to play him around 20, you know, at the most 24, I played him 32. That's, that's a lot. And the thing about book and Chris is that they just don't run. They don't quit. And that was one of the reasons why I took them out when I did, because I knew that they were going to just continue, even though the score was, you know, 30 plus at the time. I just knew those guys weren't going to, you know, stop. And I, I just had to make a, a, a leader's decision to get those guys out. So, you know, we all had the proverbial off night. Um, but I, I, I still feel the same way after my emotions have settled a bit. I put a lot on those two. And uh, they carried us most of the year. Um, last night, we all came up short. All right, Coach, thanks for the time. Before I go, man, I just want to, one, say thank you to all of you guys. I know all of you guys want to see us do well, and we appreciate that. We appreciate the the coverage and um, you guys who've been with me for, for three years, you know, we've, we've accomplished a lot in a short period of time and you guys have, have really helped promote Suns basketball and also want to be able to express um, that we think about Brittany Griner a ton. And um, I, I want our fans to know that even though I haven't spoken about it a lot, we as a staff pray for her and her family a ton. And um, I just hope that people out there will keep her, even though our season is over and we won't see her, her symbol on the floor. I pray that people will continue to, to pray for her and hopefully she can get out of that country and out of prison here soon. And so thank you guys. And, and also uh, please keep Brittany in your prayers. Thanks coach. Thank you.